All right, welcome to the Sweet Talk. Today is Monday, August 26, 2019, and I am your host, Kim Matina. And today, I am so happy to have on the show Mr. Bruce Reicher and Jen Laban. Is that, did I say your names correctly? It's, it's Lieben, but um, I am so used to all the pronunciation. I am so sorry. No, so sorry. no problem. No. I should have asked you how to pronounce it before we went on, <laughs> before we went on the air, but it's, you know, this is live and it's Kim and you know, this is the perfectly way. fine. It's all no good. worries. It's all, I am a human being. So um, you nailed mine, right? sure, you got it. what's that Bruce? No, you got mine. So you're good. All right. As long as I, one out of two is not bad. 50%, you know? <laughs> Well, today, Bruce and Jen are going to talk about WeVideo. Um, WeVideo is um, an application that you can use in the classroom, and I think it's important to, to showcase WeVideo and how it can be used. Um, some people really don't um, want to take the leap and try to learn it or um, see the need for it. So I think um, doing um, a show about WeVideo is important, especially now before the school year starts, so that Hopefully, you know, you start off small and then you kind of, you know, do what you can to um, feel more comfortable with the application and then try to implement it in with your students. Um, I am a novice person um, with WeVideo as well, so I'm really looking forward to learning from these two educators tonight and um, to really see the dashboard and um, some ways that students can use it in school. Um, and, and actually how it can be shared um, directly right within Google Classroom as well. So um, it does integrate with, with G Suite and Google Classroom, and that's another reason why um, I'm going to give it a try. And, you know, hopefully after this episode, um, Jen and Bruce will convince you the same. So we will, who wants to start? Who wants to start a, a quick introduction of, of a Wii video and how to use it in the classroom? Um, I'll start. I could start with a quick intro of like we video. I think the important thing when you were talking about like people to go try it is it will work in any curriculum area. So I don't think it should be just for like the tech teacher, TV production teacher, STEM teacher, like whatever you do in the classroom, whatever you teach, you can use we video and as simple as having kids record themselves as exit tickets or doing, you know, feedback afterwards. They can do a lot of these things on, on video. And the first advice I would give people is let your curriculum drive the video. Like don't take we video and then you're going to figure out how to use it. Like take something that you normally do, like a book report of teachers would do all the time. And maybe as a short little extension, make a, you know, we video where they could do a reflection or, uh, you know, they're one of the characters in the book and they're going to talk about the book as the character, something small and tiny to start. But that your curriculum drives it, not that you take the technology tool, okay, now what am I gonna do as a video? Um, and I think you know, that's an important thing. And I know I've been in all different levels of teaching, especially this time of year that we're just starting, Jen's been in for a couple of weeks, but time you're like overwhelmed with everything. And I was, I feel you elementary teachers, I taught nine subjects in fourth and sixth grade for a couple of years. It's like, you need something simple and easy you can use and you don't have time to do the complicated project, but we video is the perfect uh, video tool to use it. Yeah, I, t I think you're right, Bruce. I, I totally agree. I think that um, you just have to, you, you, you create your content and that's with any technology tool. You, you create your content and then um, you use, you, you apply the technology tool afterwards to align with what your needs are. Would you say that's, would you agree with that too, Jen? Yeah, um, absolutely. But the other thing I was thinking about while Bruce was talking is that sometimes teachers are afraid of the tech and they're worried that they're going to look like they don't know what they're doing. But the thing about WeVideo is that it's so um, user friendly and the design is really intuitive so that you don't have to be a master of WeVideo to use it with your students that they can, um, pretty much figure it out on their own and you can kind of figure it out on your own too as the teacher um you shouldn't be afraid of it because it is really easy to use and it's one of those things that i think you can just kind of jump in and give to the kids and odds are they will teach you how to use it <laughs> yeah i think you're right i mean i 
I have a paid version of WeVideo and um, it's the options that are available via the paid version and the free version are different. But, um, you know, I only used it to what I needed to use it for and then I was done with it. And I, I, it can be intimidating for the less tech savvy people. It really can. And I don't know if there's a big learning curve with it. Um, I used it for a little bit and then I stopped. Um, but I think that for the less tech savvy teachers, it can be intimidating. That's why I think it's important for you guys or one of you to go over the dashboard so that you can show off how easy it is to um, insert an audio and insert a video and, and what, you know, obviously students need a webcam, a device with a webcam, but, um, you know, I know WeVideo offers layers. You can layer your video and you can put transitions in there. So I, like, I really think that needs to be um, displayed so that people don't feel scared of it. No, sounds good. I'm going to share my screen in a moment and then Jen definitely, you know, like jump in and the other like hardware pieces, if you're on iPads, if you're on even kids using their phones, like high school kids or Chromebooks, especially in the beginning, like I would use what you have. Like if you have a Chromebook and you have a camera and you have a microphone built in, especially in the beginning, you don't need to attach anything else. <clears throat> All the tools, hardware tools that you need are either built in that iPad or they're built in the Chromebook or iMac uh, or sorry, um, MacBook Pro, whatever computer, even iMac that you're using, they all have a built-in mic, they all have a built-in camera, and that would be the easiest way, um, you know, to start. And the other thing to keep in mind is it definitely is called Wii Video, but it could also be like Wii Audio because now they also offer podcasting, and that might be a way to kind of start if you're intimidated. Just go and you're going to record the audio and export it, and your podcast is done and then maybe transition, you know, into the video. And on the screen share, Jen and I, we can, we can show you that. So let me share my screen. So now do you see the Wii video dashboard? Yeah. Okay, cool. So when you go in, um, you could use um, any device and that's important and it's cross-platform. When you first log in, this is what you see which is similar to me to like a blank piece of paper. And then these tools on top, there's a star tool called the Central Library, which is copyright free video clips, regular clips, audio clips. We're gonna spend most of the time in there. And then right next to it in the media library is where the built-in camera and built-in microphone are. The other things we will leave for another day of the transitions and titles and other fancy things. But this is really important, the Star Essential Collection, because it started with a couple hundred thousand to half a million. Now they're up to one million copyright free assets. I no longer have kids search for like on Google search for images. So let's say we were in New York City today. So I'm just in the regular search and I'm gonna type in New York City and then hit return. The Essential Collection goes through and now if I click on these, these are all professional video clips that I could use in my video. And I just did it by a simple search. It's video on top, pictures in the middle and sound on the bottom. Right now it's finding all, but I could say I just want images from New York City and I don't want any video or I hit the triangle down and also I'm just looking, this will be interesting sounds of New York City. So what the Hudson River sounds like, what a subway sounds like. I could go and everything in this is drag and drop. So if I go back to the video clip for a moment and let's say um, I like that Times Square, everything is drag and drop. It's, it's loading in that preview screen. I drag and drop it. Notice it turns green. If I try to put it in the audio, it will drag. It won't let me put it in there. And I'm gonna um, drop that into a video clip where it says video clip two right now. So simple search engine, almost anything you could think of is in there and it will search through like it's 1 million assets. And it's awesome that it's copyright free. You don't have to look anymore. I don't have my students look anymore in just a normal 
uh, a normal um, Google search. The other thing to point out is where it says video one, video two, I could press the plus site, Kim, and add either an audio or a video track, but I do this and I would highly recommend doing it, is you can rename these tracks. So if I click over video three, it's just a simple text box, I could rename that one text that I need on top of my video. And then maybe on the bottom, if I wanted to have some type of background or whatever I wanted that layer to be, I would just type this in. And then this also becomes the directions to my students of what I want on each track. And the other thing I'm going to talk about, and then I'll have Jen like talk about, have me kind of direct me around. If you're on a Chromebook especially, you can make as many tracks as you want, which sounds cool. In the beginning, it's not so cool on a Chromebook because after you make a couple audio tracks, and I'll put this full screen, the audio tracks will like go below. So you want to make sure that that's another reason to kind of label these tracks. Like audio one could be voiceover because on the, I don't have to make any other um, audio track or else I've seen kids have, you know, 10 or 15 audio tracks and then they can't find where they recorded their voice. Uh, okay, that's that's a good tip right there. I like that. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and then what you would do, like say you were you had like an introduction audio, you would start that first, obviously. Then on your next layer, you would have your video. So you have to kind of line that up correctly. Mm -hmm. Is that like in the storyboard, you'd have to start the voiceover from, you know, up to 10 seconds and then from... from well, there's a couple. There's a couple of different ways. If you storyboard it out, and I put this video clip in first, then I'm going to go to the next folder over called My Media, where it will show all the media that I've uploaded through Drive is the easiest way. But there's a lot of ways to upload media, and there's this little cloud. That's how you would import media. The circle you would record the screen, and the microphone you would record audio. So it's really so cool. I can is, do all I press that right there. I can I can record the audio right from the my media, or do I have to do it from the layer? No, right from my media. You would either, if you want to record the screen and have it go on there, or you could do a screencast. Well, we'll put you in the corner, and the microphone is for audio only. Okay. So if I click the microphone. What's kind of cool is below here, the microphone, it says preview while recording. If I select that, now I see my video clip or still pictures in the preview window. And as I'm doing my voiceover, I could see what the voice is going with. Oh, okay. That's, oh, wow. Okay. That's cool. Okay. And then if I record a little something, it will give me three, two, one. This is Times Square in New York City, which is amazing. All the lights are incredible. And when you see the ball on New Year's, this is where the ball goes down to announce the new year. And then I can preview it. or And then when I go to check it, then it automatically puts it on that audio line for me. And this in the beginning, too, depending on the speed of the network in your school, I'm at home. But be patient, because remember, you're uploading to their site. In iMovie, I was used to, like, if it's on the computer, it might be quicker because it's just saving right to a hard drive. You're uploading things. It does work, but it's not, like, instantaneous. Okay. And then I have my video clip, my voiceover down here. Now if I played it. This is Times Square in New York City, which is amazing. All the lights are incredible. And when you see the ball on New Year's, this is where the ball goes down to announce the new year. Right, oh, wow. so I can That's go cool. afterwards and sync that up. But if you see the pictures or the video as you're doing the voiceover, um, it's helpful. As I select a clip, it's important to know if I go to the end, my cursor becomes two arrows, and that I can make the clip shorter or longer. That's with any clip in uh, Wii Video, and these three dashes will open editing or different effects like black and white. Uh, that you could put on the picture. Okay. The other okay. thing that's super important is in the time code because it's video, even if you're recording audio, the last two numbers right here, uh, the cursor like point to, those are frames. 
So there's 24 frames in one second. So that's actually 10 seconds and 14 frames. And Wait, where do you see the 24 frames? You don't, you don't see it, but I'm just telling you how many frames are in a second. Oh, so okay. Once I go to 25 frames, it would become 11 seconds. Oh, okay. But I think that time code is important to understand in the beginning because some kids will have the clip so short and they'll be like, oh, my thing is 10 minutes and 14 seconds long. And I'm I like, never no. knew that, Bruce. I never knew the 24 uh, <laughs> frame thing. So thank you. I just learned something new. <laughs> no problem. So it, it's 10, iMovie is the same time code. So it's 10 seconds and 14 frames. And sometimes if you go to a kid's project and they're like, mine is like 10 minutes long. How come I can't, you know, how come I can't get to it? Well, like that's the reason, uh, that's the reason why. So it's 24 frames for every 10 seconds? No, 24 frames for every one second. Oh, for every one second. So now um, if I'm on the and now I use the arrow key, Believe it or not, if you look at the little blue square box, it, I'm making it go one frame at a time. Like that's how granular I could get to, you know, edit what I'm working on. And when I get to the 24, then it goes to one second. In this little blue box right here. Okay. In the bottom right hand corner, if I press this, I might lose the screen share, but I'm not sure. No, you're good. Okay. This is a super important tool too. In the bottom right hand corner, there's a magnifying glass. And if this circle is all the way over to the left, I could see everything in front of me. If I take this and if I'm really editing something like right in the clip, if I zoom to the right, it makes the clips really big. If I were to go in to zoom, you know, to edit out a little tiny section, this is just a personal preference, but I have kids have this circle all the way over to the left when they begin, just so they could see as much in front of them as possible. So the video and the audio doesn't go off the screen. I'm taking notes as you're talking. That, yeah, that's no, no, actually no. good because like you said, then the student or the user can see everything in one screen or Correct. one view without having to scroll. And even if students, my students plug in Chromebooks to monitors, but this is like the full screen tool. And the very first thing I do is you could press the full screen shortcut or go to full screen just for that reason. So I want to see as many tracks as possible. And I think if I click on these three circles next to this preview monitor, I can even make the preview monitor smaller and that will make the tracks come up a little bit. So like, I wanna see those bottom tracks um, as much as possible. And then when, above, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Sorry, when we're on our Chromebooks, sometimes that little slider at the bottom gets hidden and you just have to scroll down on the screen a little bit. So that's um, a little misconception I wanna clear up. If you don't see it, you might just have to scroll down on your page a little bit, but then it's, then it's there. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I'll show you another, because this happened to my students and me in the beginning, uh, Kim, and probably maybe to Jen's students, so I'll just show you. If I go and now I want another New York City, and I'll just get another clip and I'll put it next to it. Okay, sweeping of New York City next to it. Now, let's say for some reason in the beginning of this whole project, I want to put a title, but I just want the title on its own. So I'll do the title tool, which there are animated and non-animated ones. I'll just choose one of the static ones so it doesn't so it doesn't move. And let's say I want this, but I just want it over black. And everything in Wee Video, just double click. You double click, I take basically into the editor. But I'll, I'll show you why in one second. This is important in the beginning. Let's say I want New York City but I don't want it over anything in the background because that's hard to read. And now I'm like, I need to move these clips. So people usually take one clip and move it over, another clip and move it over. And right now we only have two video clips, but as you build your project, you know, you might have 10 or 15 different clips. So let me show you how you can move the whole track together. I'm taking my cursor and I'm just 
holding the cursor down. And as I drag over it, that's how I select more than one thing. And now it groups it together and I move those two things together. Oh, that's, that's a good tip, Bruce. Yeah, because that can, that can save a lot of time. The first year, half a year I used it, I did not know that. I'd be sitting there moving over students, you know, 15, 20 little video clips at a time as I would be editing different things for them. And every time I show that to a student, they're like, oh my, I wish I knew that. And I'm like, well, that's why I showed you. Yeah, I'm writing all this down. <laughs> and then the text layer, you wanna make sure the text layer is the top layer of anything on the project that has to be on the first line or else you won't see it. So now hit play and see how it. So now I'll show you my project and I'll do it. This other one, this is full screen. So also it might be a little bit easier if people are watching. So here's my New York this is City. Times Square in New York City, which is amazing. All the lights are incredible. And when you see the ball on New Year's, this is where the ball goes down to announce the New Year. Now I would, I am hitting escape to go back and edit it. And then uh, now my voiceover doesn't match up. So it's just a drag and drop. And now I could get my voiceover like right to the beginning where that clip of New York City, uh, you know, or of New York City shows. Um, and in the beginning, I might do another voiceover now just saying, you know, New York City by Mr. Reicher or whatever, you know, the kids want to record in the beginning. Um, and you just start populating these tracks of different, you know, titles, video clips, audio clips, um, all different um, assets uh, that they have in, in WeVideo. So any other, any, any other tips, Jen, that you use like with your kids of like when they're starting out? Um, I was just thinking of a couple different things. Um, one being that WeVideo does have um, uh, templates. So if you're unsure, you know, and you want that support, when you create a new video project, there is that option. The theme. Um, where, no, where is if, that at? If you oh. back out to your main dashboard. I, I know exactly. Okay. Yeah. I want to go to the main. Yeah, see up at the top, we video dashboard projects media. Oh, yes. Thank you. I was just. Yeah. Thinking. Oh, thank you. yeah, that's where you turn into the templates because they're awesome. I i don't actually use them, but I know that for other teachers, that's a big, um, that's a big feature for them. So where it said, choose a template. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's good to know because like, especially in the beginning, you can just use a template and then you yeah. just get content in there. You don't have it's to worry a good about it. Right? Yeah, it's a good support, I think, for teachers starting out. And then the other thing I like to show teachers, particularly elementary teachers, is the ability to switch from the timeline view to the storyboard view, because the storyboard view is much less complicated. So the, the view that Bruce had, that's mm -hmm. who is that timeline or storyboard? That's timeline. Now he's going to click on his pancake stack there and see how it says switch to storyboard. You can uh, you can click on that and would it. That, would you call that a pancake thing? I just call that a yeah. hamburger. Oh, hamburger, <laughs> stack of pancakes. You know, it's all food. I just menu. call it three line menu. <laughs> eh. It's all good. Yeah. So when you click switch, now this looks maybe for some oh, teachers yeah. more like an iMovie, but now it's storyboard mode, so you can just chronologically throw titles and video, and then when you click on the little clips that's when you can add in like a layer on top or I know on the iPad app, that's where you would double click it to make it a green screen clip. I think that for elementary or people just starting out, this might be a little bit easier, a little bit more of a simplified view to use. Yeah, I um, definitely agree. I, I yeah. think that is intimidating at all because it's yeah. <laughs> kind of dry. Like honestly, when you go into the timeline, View, yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to leave now because I'm not going to deal with this. Like, you know what? You know, it's a good analogy for a teacher if they've taught for a little bit. This reminds me a lot of like inspiration, like whatever you put on one side when you view it the other way, you know, as an outline or you view it as a picture, 
it's the same information and that's that's pretty much what this is yeah i mean i i like the templates like i i can see myself using a template especially if i had to get something done quick i don't have to build it from scratch just go in here and then like search for a specific template i'm sure they have different layouts you know like to me this is the template and then showing it in the storyboard, like the storyboard. view that and that to me is like it's more it's more welcoming you know the, the nice thing with the template too like i'll open the scientific method one is they actually give you the whole project and for me from doing it for a little bit or even in the beginning they give you tips on top be telling you like how they did it so when i open this once this opens in a moment um, you'll see the tracks will be labeled. Everything is populated. Everything is filled in. And you see what I mean now about like grouping things together to move them. Like look how many assets they have in here. Yeah. Hey, I are. am surprised at how complicated that actually looks. I'm yeah. like, wow. Like to I'm me, gonna... like I wouldn't, I wouldn't even touch that. You know, like I would, <laughs> I, I would, I would definitely just start off very simple. <laughs> The thing to do, I, was, I like always starting off on a blank canvas, but with this, what I would do is view it like full screen and at least go through it, even to give p teachers possibilities in their head of what they could do with it and then go to like the blank. It's like, this is what it looks like. That's plain. But then you have to go in and edit all that and then you have to figure out which I guess object you want to edit right right this is just like you would take this it's just like copying it and making it your own the template right but if you go back into the um this what is that the timeline or the storyboard yes. this is what what is this view called the timeline, timeline. all right this is timeline so if I wanted to change a, a slide and just say it's in the middle of the presentation or the middle of the video. I have to go through each of these, um, I guess, objects and find it. Bruce, can you view a template as storyboard view? Can we experiment? I don't know if that's a thing, but maybe if we saw it that way, it would be simpler. We're about to find out. All right. You know what I mean, right, guys? Yeah, I, I kind of Absolutely. agree with you, too. This is a very busy like for the first one that you're looking at, like I know what the things are, but let's switch it to storyboard mode and see how we do. Cause in this, like, well, you picked, you picked a really good one, I guess, for the uh, first one. It's just like everything is cropped and you can't really see the content of the slide or the, or the clip, you know? So you'd have yeah. to click on it, double click on each clip to find the specific yeah, but, one you want to change you know what i mean well this is it in the storyboard mode but what i would do in the other one where it gives you all the tracks is this is where so it does work this is where that that magnifier comes in though because oh okay you, you zoom three, into three, it the shortest, yeah So down over here, this is a good example, actually, in this lower right-hand corner. Once I take this and drag it out or to the right, then this makes the clips bigger so you can see them. But I think your original idea of, you know, maybe these templates are good to get ideas, Kim. But I always start with a blank canvas just for this reason, because when you put in your own content, it's a lot easier to know what's there than to change the template in the beginning. Yeah, because I, I think, I mean, I, I think the templates are great. I just think, you know, if you even if you zoom in and it expands the clips, you still gotta you still gotta search for this the clip that you want to change. Correct, correct. I would yeah, correct. And you, you know? could teach from the templates, but that's why even my other example, like if we're just doing a brand new project, and you come to media, and say you know what in the beginning I'm just gonna record the audio and make sure the kids can use the microphone. I might have them just record with no pictures, no video, and you can export it as audio. 
and maybe, you know, get the kids used to the interface of even just recording their voices, you could start small by just recording, you know, a All reflection right. of audio or a podcast or whatever, whatever you would like. So, so now we finished our project. So how do, how do kids, um, you know, export or save it or, um, you know, share the link? How, how do they do that now? Okay. Once you're so done. If you go back to the, to the one that you just created, the smaller one. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. So I'll go back to the test one. Uh, there it is, the second one. <coughs> Sorry. This it one? was on the other, the other screen. Yeah, the second one down. Pass. Oh, thank you. So let's say I'm all done, you know, the they follow the directions, they follow the rubric, the whole thing. Right next to where this is the title of it, test, if I click finish, you have to give it a title, uh, which is over here next to title. You can also choose a thumbnail and sometimes these populate with different pictures. And then this is a really important part, export. I wanna do video with audio or do the podcast part you can just select the circle and do audio only. And then in my school, and Jen could talk, maybe it's different in hers, but all these choices of the destination to go to, my students and myself have one. We send everything out to Google Drive and we import everything in from Google Drive. And even though it gives you the flexibility, maybe for more high school kids of FTPing or YouTube or some of those other things, in my school, we only go we, we only export out to drive. Do you have other yeah. options, Jen? Or? Same. No, we, we just use Google Drive, or if the students forget to click the Google Drive icon, then it just finalizes uh, in the WeVideo account, and then you can always go in and download it from there. But yeah, I just, yeah, just Google Drive, because then that's how we turn it into Classroom. We turn it okay. file from Google Drive. Does it create a Wii video folder in Drive? Yes. And, okay, so it does all that automatically. You don't have to do any of that housekeeping, right? Yep. Correct. Okay, yeah. that's good. And I basically, when kids are doing videos, like for the TV show, they'll send everything to their own Drive, and then they'll right-click on the file and just share it with me. And for collecting projects, you know, that that's the way that I do it so I could see what's coming in. If a student just clicks Export, it goes through this and actually makes it just as a link. But the thing I wanna show you, and it might take a moment to do this, Kim, is one of the icons that's going to come up is Google Classroom, that you could share it right from WeVideo right to a Google Classroom assignment. Okay, that's nice. Only... I knew it had the interface for it, I just never knew where it was. I'm just going to go to a regular project, so I'm not sure if this is going to export so quickly. If I go and how do you do it, Jen? Do you save it to Classroom as well? We usually save to Drive, and then they go into the assignment in Google Classroom, and they add it from Drive. Okay. Um, also, I've done it where I take a Google Slides file, and students each get a slide, and they embed their video from Drive into the slideshow, and then that's how we can uh, share videos like as a class within oh, our like own network. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of nice. That's that's nice. And then so they they save their video to Drive, and then they open up the presentation, and then they just insert the video right in the slide. Yep. Wow, that's that's yep. a good idea. I like that. that and then do cool. you have others? Do you have students do peer reviews of? Um, other videos? I have been experimenting with having students uploading their final video to Flipgrid as, so that they can watch each other's video because you can um, you can upload an existing video file to Flipgrid. You don't have to always just record right in the, uh, the app. Um, so you can have students watch each other's videos on that particular grid, grid. and kind of give feedback as like a um, kind of along the way, kind of a formative, you know, review so each the, other's projects. So let me see, let me get this straight. So mm -hmm. you have the kids save to drive mm -hmm. 
and then they open up Flipgrid, and then they uh -huh. add that video into the into the topic into Flipgrid. Yeah. Okay. And so, so you do it either way. Oh yeah, I've messed okay. around with all different ways to do it. Sometimes we've uh, embedded our videos into uh, a Google site page. Um, all all sorts of different things. Well, that's good that you're saying all that because you know, you know, some people may not realize that you can share it that mm -hmm. way. You don't you don't have to always put it in Google Classroom like. You can just, yeah. you know, download. Once you have it downloaded to Drive, you can manipulate it any way you want, you know? Yep. So you said three things. You said Flipgrid, you mm -hmm. said Google Sites, and you said Google Slides, you know? Yep. So I think, and and then that way, you're allowing the kids to do peer review as well, and then you have easy access to the to the information too. To yeah, the it's, it's just all about what works for you as a teacher. You know, some teachers favor one thing over the other. If you do a lot of Flipgrid, that might be a natural place to put it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know. I've kind of been favoring the slides method at the moment, but um, I don't know. That could change at any time. Yeah. I like to mi mix it up. I mix mean, it up a little bit. I think that the, if a teacher is used to collecting all the assignments in one place in Google Classroom, this was not sent to a drive it was just sent out and right here notice they give you the little classroom google classroom icon and basically it will create a shortcut you pick your class and then you just hand it right in so it's just a different way you know to do from drive the only caveat for this is they send it to google classroom the, um, in Google Classroom, it has to have a due date on the assignment or else it won't find it. Okay, so when you hit share to classroom, it, it does it prompt the student to put it into an assignment because you yeah. were breaking up when you were talking. It's okay. When you hit classroom, it opens up to their classroom and then they find your class, they find the assignment, they click share, and then that makes a shortcut right to where you would have uploaded it right from your drive and they just click one button and it shares it right away to Google Classroom. Now, is there a way that you can grab the, um, I guess, the URL address? So I guess you can save it to drive and then the students can share via the URL address and then add the URL yeah, address of the video in I, forms? I wouldn't recommend the URL address idea because last year I had a bunch of kids who they were doing projects not for me, for somebody else. And they're like, it's not exporting, it's not exporting. They didn't even click finish. They just copied the URL that was on top because it said copy the URL, that those were the directions. Uh -huh. And then it makes the student want to log in because they're not even logged into their project. Okay. Because so like sometimes I, like I, I like to have all of the links in one place. So like... In a, for me in a Google form would make sense because if I'm if I have 50 kids that I'm doing this project in I can have all of the links right in a, in a Google sheet that was populated from a form that they filled out you know yeah I think you could form, you could definitely the form could be in a Google ways. classroom there's a lot of different ways I just for me yeah. it's like less clicking and in and out of things I have the sheet open and all the links are there I didn't know if there was a way on how you can share the URL link, or do you, you just can have to share. download it to drive and then take it from there? Now, if you finish, if you finish, which is like also export your project um, in we video. So like Bruce is hovering over exports right now. So you'll actually see those are your finalized videos. You can share that particular link and it will give you a link to we video. The other thing would be you could finish your video and send it to Drive, and then you could give the link to that file in Google Drive. The only problem with that is you have to make sure that your sharing settings are, uh, yeah, like like Any set to view or whatever. I would imagine yeah. that's that would just be the other thing. But you could have a Google form. I just think it depends on your students and how tech savvy they are um, yeah. with it. That's all. Yeah, most of most of the time. I'm similar to Jen that I will have the students share it directly to their own drive. That way visually they could go in a Wii video folder and see their projects and then figure out like, are you going to send it to Flipgrid? Are you going to embed it on a slide? Are you just going to purely just share it with the teacher? 
um, you know, like basically figure out where it's going. And like I said, I've had kids who have just copied the URL and if they don't copy the correct, you know, URL, it actually makes the person who's getting it, it has to log in as them. So it is possible to do it, but I've seen kids get confused, like which URL, you know, do you, uh, to do you grab? Have to yeah. All right. Well, that that's good. So now to, 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 um, wrap up the show a little bit i want you know i want your expertise on trying to give other teachers ideas on how you can use we video in the classroom okay how do i unshare my screen so up at the top see where it says stop share oh right 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 there's one more there's one last quick thing that i actually want to show you before i stop sharing my screen and you're gonna like this this is actually a button that goes right into the Google Drive as you're working on a project. So this is um, a project I was doing. See where it says linked resources? Yep. If I select that, and then I link a resource. It opens up my own drive, which could be the script that I'm reading. It could be the rubric. It could be a checklist that you share with students. And it can open it up right inside of Wee Video. So any file that's in Drive can be linked to your video clip. Correct. Like this is in their own Drive at this point. Link a resource, and then I click Link Resource. So an example would be, like I have my students actually write the voiceover, write like two paragraphs of what's going to be in the beginning of their the audio in their project. They'd be able to go in their Drive here and basically open their script digitally and then go and record it and they would see it right on the same computer. Ah, okay. So it, it will open up and view the content of a doc? Well, anything in the drive. Anything, wow, that's good to know. That's why I thought, okay, let me get rid of my screen, so I'm gonna. That's really good because that's really good. You know, uh, people have, they took pictures of content that they wanna include or they have PDF files and they, they can actually, you know, include that right in there, which that's actually a really good uh, feature. And I think as we video goes on, I think you'll see even more. It already goes to Google Classroom. It already has linked resources. I think it, there's even going to be more integration that could come, you know, of the two things working together, you know, just to make it easier that you go to we video to do your project. And like I was saying before, almost with the Google image search, there are no other tabs that are open. Like now I could just stay in my project, um, you know, the more resources they add. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Bruce. I think that was valuable information. I think Bruce, your video is like, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, sorry. I just unmuted my stuff for a second. Yeah, no, I was just saying that it's a good product. It works with, you know, all the Google things well. And I think we're going to see more and more of that as, as time goes on. And it's just easier for the students to be in one place instead of opening up tabs to get to other places. Yeah, I agree. Now, Jen, what about you? How do you give some ideas on how other teachers could, could use this in the classroom? Um, there's lots of different ways. Uh, that teachers could use it, I think, based on your subject area. So I know that I've seen my science teachers uh, take like the traditional report where students would all do PowerPoints and instead they did, um, vid they made videos instead. So they used a lot of the stuff from the Essentials Library. Um, I feel like we also should mention that the Essentials Library is part of the paid plan. Um, so you got to buy the stuff, um, but worth it because that stuff is so expensive outside. Um, I have done projects, uh, last year we did commercials for my school. So the students had to create a commercial for the school, which not only was a good kind of social emotional kind of culture building activity, but the idea was that we could then use the videos um, to show incoming sixth graders, like the cool things about our school. So it's a, it's a neat thing that you could kind of post in a more public venue. Um, I've seen students do, I'm trying to think of what the social studies project was. They almost did, they were like news reports that they did 
on different, I think they were doing like industrialization and they each had different topics and they did them as like news reports and some of them kind of dressed up, you know, and it was, it was pretty funny and they would use like the filter that made it look like an old uh, footage and stuff like that. So um, it kind of depends on your subject. I think you could take a project you already have where maybe your outcome was a PowerPoint or a presentation or a poster and you could even just give video as one of the options for students to use. So let, let them have a student, have them have choice in there. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and what they create. Now, what about like a reflection? Absolutely. I mean, cause you can do the, um, when you do the screen record in WeVideo, you can choose to have it be your screen. You can choose to have it be the, uh, the webcam and kids love talking to their computer kind of confessional style. I think maybe it's just a product of the YouTube like vlogger generation, but they very much like that. And um, I've done screencasts where students are basically kind of giving you a tour of their assignment and they're walking you through it and talking about it and the different parts and why they made the decisions that they did. So someone may ask like, um, how does this differ from Flipgrid? How would you answer that question? Because I mean, Flipgrid, Flipgrid's a great tool also, yeah. but it's a video recording tool as well. Mm -hmm. So like to, to, to actually conclude, I, I, I like to hear like what you, how you would address that and to see how you would tell, what you would tell people to, to use WeVideo or not, to, or use Flipgrid. Yeah, um, I feel like Flipgrid is great if you are looking for just a simple video recorder where you want kids to kind of just talk to the camera, or if you're looking for something really collaborative where you're looking for students to watch something and then post like response videos to it, because okay. we video is not really like the social part of that. We video would be if you wanted video editing that was more robust and had more features to it because we video can be as complicated as you want it to be. You can have lots of layers. You can add in the green screening and the transitions and different titles and video effects. So you can get more when it comes to like, it's definitely the fuller, more robust video editor where Flipgrid is more of just like a one and done. Bruce, would you agree? Yeah, I would like add to that. I mean, the video is more of like storytelling. Like you're coming up with the story of your class, the story of learning. In my own case with like a TV news show, like they're going out and doing news package, like video features on what's new for what's new in school this year. And they'll go and interview three or four different people in the school. So it's a little bit more complex where Flipgrid, you, you do see what the other people are saying. Um, but I think it's more like storytelling. It can really be movie making if you want to take it to that length of, you know, plan everything out, block everything out, and where all your scenes are going to be. And I know Flipgrid has those cool, you can add backgrounds and like different scenes also. Um, but I think it's more like a long form where Flipgrid to me is like, I know you can change it, but it's like 60 seconds or less, I think, that you're just getting responses where, you know, the Wii video, it could be a 30 second public service announcement, but it also could be a five minute documentary, which like the like kids in my school had done, you know, for historical events in the enrichment or gift and talented classes. So I think, you know, just different tools. Um, it's not one is better than the other, but I think it's more towards the long form and digital storytelling, uh, you know, and they both are awesome that they can be used in any curriculum area. Yeah, I totally agree. I just, I wanted to clarify that because some people may think, well, I'm using Flipgrid already. What's the difference? Why do I have to use WeVideo? So I'm glad that you both um, contributed to that because I think it's important to hear like your opinions and how you differentiate the two tools. Um, you know, because like you said, the WeVideo could be more complex and more, yeah. um, you know, it can be as long or short as you want and add different types of transitions and special effects to it and music we didn't mention music where flipgrid is not as complex as that yeah although they keep adding features to flipgrid so it does have more that now than it had before and you can change like the length of your videos and stuff i have some teachers that use flipgrid as their method to like create the content 
and then download the videos in Flipgrid into WeVideo to then do the editing and the finalizing and the adding titles and things. So honestly, I think there are two tools that actually work really well together. Oh, that's good. I'm glad, I'm glad that you mentioned that because it, it, App, app smashing is the way to go sometimes. So, you yeah, know. I agree with Jen. And like I said before, even though it's called We Video, it could be called We Audio, that you don't need a third party software now to go do podcasts. That you could just record your audio track and put little music in, in the beginning and end, and your podcast is done. And I don't, does, I don't know, does Flipgrid have audio only if you don't want to use video? I think you, I'm not sure even, if you could just record audio and not even see yourself. I don't, I don't think so at the moment. I don't know if that's an option um, or not, but that's another thing about we video that I would say might be different than Flipgrid. I think, yeah, I think it's just meant for video Flipgrid, which makes total sense. Um, so you can actually see the person and, you know, their response. Well, I have to say, I learned a lot tonight, and I really want to thank you for being on. I, I was really looking forward to this show. Um, I know I feel a lot more comfortable with the dashboard now, <laughs> so I hope that other people who listen or watch this show feel the same. I think you guys did an awesome job on explaining how you can use it in the classroom and and you know the dashboard and a different and the different features of it because you know I think it's not as intimidating as it looks you know and I think that you guys did a great job giving it justifying that so thank you very much in, in, the, in the beginning I would totally tell people because I did this myself wevideo.com slash academy is all little like one minute videos of how to do everything in we video and I know when I first started using it I'm like I don't get the green screen I don't know how to do it all right go back watch like the little two minute video on it um, especially in the beginning because it's all new so we video.com academy is their own little tutorials but they're little snippets of tutorials and they're really helpful I'm gonna um, have all that in the weekly collection so um you can access that little um, academy there and, and check out those little tutorials. But what I'm going to do now is try to figure out, let me see here, how to share my screen now. So let me see here, hold on a second. Um, share screen. All right, can you see my screen? I hope you can. Yes. All right, cool. All right, so um, if you want to visit my uh, website, it is at www.thesweettalk.com. That's the S U I T E talk.com. And you can subscribe to my show on YouTube, join the um, Facebook group, and subscribe to the newsletter. And you can also listen to it on. Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Google Podcasts. And I will have also on here, if you click on the episode and podcast list, the um, tonight's episode will be listed here in this um, data set here and with the YouTube link and the weekly collection. And most importantly, we are trying to pay it forward here on the Sweet Talk. And if you would like to um, be a guest on my show to try to um, help other educators integrate tech into the classroom effectively, right? We have to make sure it all lines up with our curriculum. Um, please fill out this guest form and I will uh, email you a schedule and get you on the show. So that concludes our show for tonight. So thank you so much, guys. I'm so glad that you guys came on. Thank you for taking the time. Um, I am definitely going to be pushing out we video this year. Um, my school is going to pilot. We're going to pilot um, we video in the spring. So I'll be working with um, the we video representative um, to in the fall to try to set up and pilot. And I have a few teachers. Uh, showing interest in using the WeVideo for uh, book commercials. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and I think it's it's going to really step up um, 
the game for the students and, and, and really, really take ownership and be engaged in what they're doing. So I really, I'm excited about it. And maybe when I get going with it, I'll have a show and follow up with you and, and kind of discuss where we are in our wee video journey. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for being on. Thank you for having us. Thank you. And uh, I will see you again next time. Have a great evening. Thank you. Bye.